joining us today on a very special City Talk. I'm Maria Soreo. And I'm Liz Brown Swanson. And Liz, we are here today on the grounds of Rancho Palos Verde City Hall, where very shortly it will have a new name. That's right, Maria. So much excitement here. Our city councilman and city founder, Ken Dida, is being celebrated right here with the community as the Rancho Palos Verde City Hall will officially become Ken Dida City Hall. That's right, and what a special celebration this is with many of our local leaders and residents here for this event. We're going to have a ceremony coming up, and also, Maria, drum roll, yes. the unveiling of the city sign. Welcome to what is currently known as Upper Point Facente, but not for so long. I am so delighted to see so many familiar faces here this morning. It means so much to me to Councilmember Dida and former council members. Your presence here this morning is a mere testament to the indelible mark that Councilmember Dida has had on you, the peninsula, and the city of Rancho Palos Verdes. Before I hand the microphone to the mayor, I do want to share some personal thoughts. Councilman Dida and I began working together over 20 years ago on what was then the Neighborhood Compatibility Steering Committee. And I know Carolyn, Lois, you remember that committee. And oftentimes, after our two years of meetings, he would hang around after the meeting and talk to me. And he would share stories. He would tell me about the efforts he and his peers endured to incorporate the city. He spoke so highly of, of his colleagues and those efforts and the reason why it was so important to incorporate. He talked about the goals, the vision, and the pillars that make Rancho Palos Verdes what it is today. How appropriate that we are gathered here today, this morning, following just days ago our 49th anniversary in what is officially the beginning of the countdown to September 7th, 2023, our 50th anniversary. During those times that we would meet, um, Councilman Dida taught me a lot. And I learned a lot from him. And one of the things I, I remember vividly is he, he, he said, do you, do you know where the 16 foot by right height limit comes from? And he told me that he went out and measured his house and said, okay, this is going to be the height that, that goes in the, in the municipal code. So if you heard that rumor, it's not a rumor, it is true. It, we now know what, what Councilman Dida's house height is. It's 16 feet and not an inch over it. <laughs> Councilman Dida, my friend, I know what today means and represents to you. As I see it, you are an icon that embodies the essence of a civic leader. You bleed the colors of Rancho Palos Verdes. And I'm honored and privileged to be here today to witness and share in the celebration of your legacy. Congratulations. On that note, I'm gonna hand the microphone to Mayor Dave Bradley. Thank you, Ara. And good morning and welcome to, uh, for those of you that have come from out of town, welcome to Rancho Palos Verdes. Um, I think we finally got weather that was gonna cooperate with us. A couple weeks ago, we were dedicating the new um, portion of the preserve and it was wickedly hot. Yesterday, I know city staff was uh, petrified that we were gonna be under a half an inch of rain, even though we haven't had rain in uh, almost uh, six months. Uh, but today I think it's the perfect um, a combination of both being a little bit moderate and a beautiful, uh, uh, picturesque place to have this ceremony. 
Uh, I want to uh, welcome some of our distinguished guests, folks from out of town. Uh, Assembly Member Maratucci, thank you very much for coming. Um, I'd like to uh, recognize uh, Ken's sister who's come here, um, um, Carol, uh, Ken's uh, daughter, Beverly, and his son, Bruce. Um, hopefully you are as proud of your father and your brother as we are, and we really appreciate you letting us have him uh, part-time. Um, I'd also like to... Uh, <laughs> okay, maybe not so much part-time. Um, I'd also like to recognize some of our, uh, our former mayors and council members from the city of Rancho Palos Verdes. Uh, Ann Shaw, uh, Doug Stern, uh, Jackie Bacharach, uh, Jerry Dehovic. I think, I don't see, Su oh, I'm getting to you. Um, I think Susan Brooks was supposed to be here, but I don't see her. And then Brian Campbell. Thank you all for your service to our city previously, and thank you for being here today. I also want to um, uh, recognize uh, some of our fellow uh, city councilmen from different cities from around the hill. Uh, Steve Zuckerman, uh, B. Derringer, Velvet Smiths, and uh, Don Murdoch. Thank you all for coming. Um, the Palos Verdes Peninsula, all four cities are really um, all to get in this together. And I can't uh, express how much we enjoy working with our sister cities within Palos Verdes. This is a phenomenal day and a long time coming. Um, Any time that we can recognize somebody that has dedicated over 50 years to the city of Rancho Palos Verdes from before its infancy to now, that he is currently a serving city council member uh, 49 years after the city's incorporation. But years before that was the beginning of the, uh, of the thought of Save Our Coastline and the incorporation of the city. It is only fitting that we would recognize such a giant of our community, um, such a visionary um, in a small way by uh, renaming our Civic Center after former mayor, current councilman, city founder, all around good guy who continually teaches me about the city and the history of the city, even though I grew up here. Uh, the things that he brings uh, to bear and his uh, encyclopedic uh, memory of things and how we got to where we are uh, can never be uh, understated. So with that, I would like to just say my personal thanks to Councilman Dida for your over 50 years of service to our city and your dedication. With that, I would like to turn the microphone over to Assemblyman Maratucci for a few words, and then we're going to hear from our other city council members, and then uh, we are going to go a little bit impromptu and do a little bit of open mic, invite the other um, council members from uh, the other cities to come up and give a few remarks. But now, Assemblymember Maratucci. Thank you, Mayor Bradley, and good morning, everyone. I'm, good morning. I'm Assemblymember Al Murutsuchi, proudly representing the South Bay, and uh, I am here along with all of you to honor this living legend here, Ken Dida. You know, uh, Mayor Bradley was uh, uh, reminding me about how he had served, you know, not only was he one of the original founders of the city, uh, one of the first, on the first city council of Rancho Palos Verdes, but, uh, you know, to come back uh, for another tour of duty to serve this community that he loves so much, I think really is testament to the person that he is and to the community that he loves. I remember when um, I was one of many elected officials, I'm sure, that received a tour along with your city manager and, and others of the Portuguese Bend uh, landslide, that uh, perennial challenge that Rancho Palos Verdes uh, faces. And, uh, and of course, as I was asking questions like, well, why isn't the county paying for this? I, I don't know if there's anyone from the county here, but, uh, <laughs> you know, of course, Ken stands up and says, well, let me tell you, you know, what happened 50 years ago during those discussions. And that really goes to what uh, Mayor Bradley was talking about, 
that encyclopedic uh, knowledge of you know this community, this peninsula, and um, you know, and, and so uh, we're all so blessed uh, to have Ken Dida uh, serve uh, the peninsula, not just Rancho Palos Verdes, but the entire peninsula for over 50 years. The, thank you very much, sir. Uh, thank you to the city of Rancho Palos Verdes for inviting me to uh, join all of you. And um, I have a certificate uh, on behalf of the state of California. I'd like to uh, present this to the Honorable Ken Dida. Congratulations, sir. So with that, I would like to uh, invite up uh, Councilman Eric Alegria to say a few words and also his thoughts about Councilman Dida. Thank you so much, Mayor. So wonderful to see you all. And uh, Ken, what a special day to recognize you. I think it was but a couple of conversations into getting to know Ken that the first thing, one of the initial things he said to me that resonated with me and has stuck with me and that he's embodied is he said, I'm a, I'm a civil servant. I'm not a politician. I am for the people. My work and dedication is for this community. And as I've been sort of reflecting on this particular ceremony and, and how special this is, I've been thinking about what really does a community mean? Uh, I know to me personally, it's been quite meaningful to be embraced, Councilman, by, by you, my fellow council members, and the great legacy that is our uh, city councils prior to us. But the two terms that came to mind most often were sacrifice and love. And when I talk about sacrifice, I'm thinking of those evenings, Councilman, where over the years you dedicated yourself to this community and perhaps you had to take time to uh, dedicate to the community that took away from your family or uh, really demonstrate to your family the great value of community. And, and so for that, I, I do want to, along with the mayor, recognize the Dida family for allowing us to have so much time from Councilman Dida, your, your father, your brother, and, uh, and I'd like to have a round of applause for the family, the Dida family. For all that sacrifice. And then when I think about love, Councilman, I, I, I think about the great example that you've left for us, which is what you see in front of you, this great legacy, which is all the people that you've touched, that you embrace, that you've taught, that you've instructed. And I really can think of no better way to recognize the Civic Center and the future vision for the Civic Center by the name Kendaya, which ultimately, beyond the man, now embodies a mere important theme and legacy for this community, which speaks to the importance of us coming together and, and contributing to one another and supporting one another. So really that's what community is about. That's what the Civic Center is really all about now and into perpetuity. And for that, Councilman Dida, with my uh, greatest thanks to you for your great example, thank you for all that you've done. It's well deserved this wonderful recognition. Now I'd like to invite uh, Councilman Kruchank, a shadow of his former self, um, on his uh, uh, to come up and make a few uh, remarks as well. Good, good morning, everyone, and thank you all for being here. Um, this is a real tribute to someone that's been a friend of mine since the day I met him. Uh, and if you think about today in terms of the fights that our, our communities have in regards to retaining local control, you can look back 50 years ago and see the same thing that was occurring back then and why our city became from an unincorporated to an actual city back in 1973. It's because of people like Ann Shaw and Ken Dida and others that formed the Save Our Coastline. And at that time, it was Los Angeles County that wanted to expand the number of housing along the coast and put a number of apartments and, and basically take over this uh, peninsula. And many in the community had the, they didn't just complain about it. What they said is, let's actually do something about it. And what's neat is, I look out in this audience and I see all these people that have done things. You know, we don't just complain about things, we do things. And you think about Councilman Dida and him doing this for 50 years for a city, and even before then. And you think about that and you think, this is an amazing dedication, but it's well deserved. And he stands for all of us. He stands for all the people that didn't just complain, but we went out and did something. 
And for that, he's a true leader. And he's always been my friend just because I've used him as my mentor. I always tell people I'm on the council to serve the people and not screw things up. And hopefully I haven't done too bad. But at the end of the day, when I need wisdom, I look to Councilman Dida for that wisdom. And so for this, I'm very thankful for that. So Ken, you're my friend and well-deserved and congratulations. And with that, I'd like to invite uh, Mayor Pro Tem Barbara Ferraro to come up and uh, say a few words. There was a time when, and Ken says this about himself sometimes, that he's a cranky old man. And maybe I shared that opinion at one time, but I can tell you he is not. He has one of the biggest hearts. He's really just a teddy bear. And I landed here just three years after the city was incorporated and had no idea what had transpired. And the more I've learned over the years is that really I have him to thank for the fact that we can even just see the ocean from here. You know, they wanted to build skyscrapers on the coast, on the bluff. And he was willing to put himself and his hard-earned money on the line for so the rest of us when we came along could enjoy the peace and the tranquility of Rancho Palos Verdes and the peninsula and thank you to the family and the one thing that I've learned and loved about Ken talking about love yes he loves this community so very much but the one love for him that was greater was that of Lorraine. And he, he took care of her. She was his priority. And he loved her dearly. And he still loves to tell the story about how he saw her across the room at the dance and said, that's the one. But we are so fortunate to be able to do this for you while you are still living. You know, it's been a policy of the city to do these things after someone passes on. And I think this is one of the best things we ever did to make an exception here because there's no other name that d deserves to be on this Civic Center any more than Ken Dida. Love you, Ken. Okay, with, with that, I'd like to invite the uh, current council to come up and stand next to the side. I would also like to point out uh, in a moment uh, because this is such a historic um, occasion. Uh, the city of Rancho Palos Verdes now has a new sign standard, and you're about to see our new sign standard as well. Uh, that seemed to be only fitting to unveil that at the same time as we're unveiling uh, this sign. This is an experience I don't know really how to handle. Uh, I, I'm, I'm really at a loss for words, but I want to thank you, and I appreciate the fact that you dispensed with the policy temporarily <laughs> to have this happen. Uh, it gives me a chance, frankly, to say the things that I really wanted to say. This was not a one-man effort, but the one thing I want to do is thank one great lady, Lorraine. She not only supported me, but the one thing she always said, and I'll never forget it, every time I saw something that I wanted to get done or that I think should be done differently, she says, well, get started and do something about it. <laughs> so not only did she encourage me uh, to go on and do the sacrificing she had to, but uh, that was a great thing for me all along. Gordon Curtis with the, in, in the unincorporated area, he was pretty much the spokesman for us. He was the flag bearer and at the same time he did all the work with respect to the... What? I'm just going to try to lower it maybe. 
he did all the work with respect to the lawsuits that we followed because we challenged the constitutionality of the formation law and uh, actually we won that argument. Then there was Fred Hess. He was mayor of Rolling Hills. He was the political interface. Uh, two important things uh, among the other many things that he did was when uh, the current supervisor of uh, the 4th District passed away in an accident, then he had Jim Hayes appointed by the governor. Jim Hayes was another resident of Rolling Hills and a staunch supporter of uh, Save Our Coastline and our effort. Then there was a great lady, Dorothy Lacan. She was responsible for a Speakers Bureau and she was most effective when she tried her committee to present the testimony before uh, the Board of Supervisors. Uh, most of you don't probably don't remember, but we lost at the first meeting of the Board of Supervisors because the developers had a qualified protest and that's why we went to court on the uh, constitutional issue. Uh, she was also very good at working with the staff. Partway through the process, we found one section of uh, the incorporation uh, process that did not really support the incorporation. So imagine, midterm, in the middle of the process, she was able to get the local agency formation commission to give us a buy and let us go ahead and take them off so we would more be in a more positive position to end up getting the city. So, you know, she, she was fantastic. Then we had Alice Hackworthy, later Alice Savage. She was responsible for three campaigns. The first one was basically uh, to get the petition signed. The second one, because it meant money to the city, was a very extensive and very successful registration uh, process, uh, voter registration. She got so many. And obviously the third one was for the uh, city itself. So uh, that was it for that portion. Uh, Jim Herbert led us through he was our attorney, and he led us through the maze of illegal uh, issues, basically, uh, so that we wouldn't stumble and fall. We, we basically stayed on, on track. There was a lady that I have a great, great deal of respect for, and that's Dina Friedson. The reason you see, the reason you see Rancho Palace Verdes as it is now is because her and her committee basically designed the city. There were three things she wanted to achieve and I think she achieved it very well. The first was single family, residential, low density development. When we started the city, we had 41,000 and some odd uh, people in, in, in the population. After 50 years, we've got just a little over 43,000. I think that's success as far as I'm concerned for her. The second, thank you, she deserves it and then more. Then the other thing that she did was she wanted to preserve the view. That was a long flight. It took 16 years to actually prepare an ordinance that would pass the constitutional test because the Constitution doesn't guarantee you. But we worded in such a way that we passed the constitutional uh, test. It is now an ordinance in our city. It was the first ordinance for view, restoration, and preservation and is being followed by many other cities. The third thing that she 
worked into our plan for the city is something that has just been completed last month to a, a great degree. And that was open space. I don't know if many of you realize it, but 50% of our city is owned by the city, which is you. In perpetuity, we've got all that land uh, that is going to stay vacant in perpetuity and provide the kind of ambiance that the city deserves. Woo! Yes. Yes. So basically, that was what she was doing. My small contribution was the financial one. I was required by LAFCO to put a, a financial feasibility study together. Uh, I learned a lot. I spent two days at the county CAO's office and then found out just exactly what we did, state subventions and new taxes and all of that. The net result uh, was that we did not increase the amount of budget that the county had set for us, although the developers wanted double uh, the, uh, the cost of that. But we ended up with a 5.8 cent property tax for the city. It's about the lowest one in the county. And because of Prop 13, we're still running around 6% uh, of it. All the others are things that people have passed as uh, propositions and then their districts and everything else. But that's basically uh, what we did. Okay. A year from now, we're going to celebrate a great event, and I'm looking forward to that. And that's our 50th anniversary. Uh, it, it's going to be a milestone for me, at least, and everybody else is going to enjoy it as well. So, with that, thank you very much. Thank the council, thank the Mayor Bradley, and all the other members that saw fit to honor me with this. I have the privilege of working with all of you. Thank you. Also, I want to uh, allow anybody else to come up um, and say a few words about Councilman Dida, if you'd like. I, I start by saying that um, I always feel that we bear a great responsibility. There are wonderful leaders like you, Honorable Ken Dida, who have paved the way for us and the future leaders to be as thoughtful, as engaged, and as a true, just, treasure of our community. I think that the things that we enjoy today are not by accident, they are purposeful, and they were very well thought out. And I'm grateful for all of your efforts and your dedication. And I like the way that the ceremony started by reminding us that what we choose to do in public service is for the benefit of the public. And we are incredibly privileged to have four cities who work very well together to preserve that. It is not ever lost on us that this is our community and we're, we're but a voice of all of our voices. So thank you for teaching us that. Thank you for the legacy. In true tradition, we have a certificate for you. On behalf of Mayor Zeronian and the entire council and our city staff, we thank you very much. First of all, I would thank everybody for being here. Um, I hear from people about the sacrifices our family made for this to happen. And I can only say that some people may say that, sorry, my plate is full. Do not realize how big of a plate my, my father has. It will never be full. And we want it for nothing. That's all I wanted to say. Um, but I've known Ken forever. In fact, just to give you some idea, when we first met, we were both tall, dark, and handsome. <laughs> now there's just one of us. Sorry, Ken. Um, <laughs> um, to give you some idea, I, I love this guy. I love what's happened to this community. Um, I bought, bought, we bought our first house up here for $32,000. Give you some idea. 1970, before all this happened. Loved every minute of it. Met Ken, I've, we've done so much together with, over the years. Um, I felt like I had to just do something special for him. Um, Live my life as an inventor. I threw this together actually yesterday because I had to do it. But what we have here 
is on plaque. And what it says is, Ken Dyer, King of the Hill. <laughs> Hi, my name is B. Derringer, and I've been a council member in Rolling Hills for almost 10 years. And I just want to say on behalf of my city and its residents, and certainly my council, how much we appreciate council member Ken Dida. I personally admire him very much. I think he embodies the three P's, uh, which are passion, purpose, and persistence. And um, I like those qualities so much. I try to embody those for my city. But uh, Council Member Dides has been referred to. His passion is all about the betterment of Rancho Palos Verdes and its citizens. And it exudes out of him. He may be a little slower in how he works now than he was before, but inside he is a racer, racing to do what's best for his city. And he's a long distance runner. He doesn't give up. His purpose is to better the people. And it's he's a true servant leader. So I admire him for that. And he's persistent. Uh, I mean, I just like to call, coin all the phrases, but he's like the Energizer Bunny. And I thought I was that. But I think he puts me to shame because I, I have a few years yet to keep uh, beating the drum. <laughs> so we don't have, uh, or our certificate didn't arrive in a timely manner to give it on behalf of our city. But the certificate is in the mail. I will make sure it gets to you. So we know where thank you. Live. Yes, and they know where I live. They can find me, you know, even though it's a gated city. I just wanted to thank Ken for um, really being a role model and something for us to uh, follow. I'm, I'm only two years into my role as a civil servant, and when I see somebody that has uh, the longevity and the passion, uh, I'm, I'm, just, I'm in awe, and I'm, that's all I can say, is to think that somebody has made their life out of this um, just based on my limited two-year experience um, all I can say is I'm at all. So thank you for all you've done not only for the city of Rancho Palos Verdes Estates but for the peninsula as a whole because as everyone has said here today while we might be independent cities we really are a community because we all um, we're all connected we're all interdependent it's really important so thank you. To echo what a number of people have already said here today, years ago, in, in Aura, I don't know where you are right now, Aura, I, re, I remember that steering committee years ago, that's where I first met you, I would almost forgotten about that, it was 20 plus years ago, but I remember Ken, back when I first moved to Palos Verdes 25 or so years ago, and I was trying to figure out how a homeowners association worked, I just volunteered in my local HOA. And he was always kind, he was always patient. He taught me 99% of what I know about the history of the city. It was a pleasure working with him years later on the city council. He continued to teach me and still teaches me to this day. And I swear, kid, you don't look any different now than you did 20 years ago. So <laughs> thanks again for everything you've done for me. Thanks for everything you've done for the community, for the library. It's been a real pleasure, and I, I, I couldn't be happier that this honor was uh, was given. So, appreciate it. I just want to take a minute to say how tickled to death I was when I heard that this honor was going to be bestowed upon Ken. Um, I met Ken probably 17 years ago, roughly, when I first started getting involved with the city. I grew up in RPV and moved back, and everyone encouraged me, not everyone, but a lot of people encouraged me to run for city council and I first got my feet wet on the finance advisory committee. There's Judge O'Brien, who was leading the charge back then. Um, but uh, I got involved and I met a guy named Ken Guida and uh, I've been reflecting on this day just thinking about what Ken Guida meant to me and my family or means to us. But I, I wrote down some words that people used to describe Ken when I first met him and they echo what Barbara said. I don't know if you want to look up what these words mean, but they describe Ken as argumentative, combative, 
quarrelsome, contentious, truculent, and a curmudgeon. Okay, I'm going to define curmudgeon, and this is, I'm not saying this is what he is, but this is how others describe him. An ill-mannered, ill-tempered, surly individual, a difficult person, usually an older man, who is stubborn in his notions and his opinions. That's not the kind of guy that we know, is it? <laughs> anyway, I, I got to know Ken, and, and that, that uh, description preceded my growing friendship with Ken. I really got to know Ken on the campaign trail in 2011. And uh, I'll never forget, we had a debate at Marymount, and it was late, and Ken came out, and he took the time. He, he literally, you probably don't remember this, Ken, but he put his arm around me, and we talked about three or four or five different issues. And, uh, you know, this, his comment meant a lot to me. He says, you know, you're a young guy, but I respect you know, what, what you're doing and trying to accomplish here. Don't ever let him beat you down. And that was the start of what I think has been an excellent and, and very valued friendship on my part and the part of my family. So the words I would use to describe Ken, okay? Tough, smart, opinionated, headstrong, hardworking, energetic, and passionate. Passionate being the most important word. Ken's passionate about, anyone who knows Ken, he's passionate about his God, his church, his country, his family, his friends, and the city of Rancho Palos Verdes. Not necessarily in that order, but anyway, with that, Ken, I want to just say this is a well-deserved honor. Beyond well-deserved, your work can never be replicated. My wife wanted me to tell you she thinks you're a piece of bread. Okay, does anybody know from the East Coast what a piece of bread means? Sometimes the crust is hard, sometimes it's soft, but the inside is always soft. And Ken, you've got a great heart. I just want to thank you personally for your friendship from the citizens of Rancho Palos Verdes and also for your mentorship. Thank you, Ken Dida. God bless Ken Dida. Thank you. Ken, what an honor this is. So I was fortunate in the early 90s. Uh, I see Carolyn Petcher back there. Hey, Carolyn. When uh, I, I uh, was on the planning commission, and I see Jackie here, Jackie Backrack, um, was one of the council members put me on the planning commission. And uh, fortunately, I was able to learn about this wonderful man who was all the things that Jerry just described. A curmudgeon, challenging, stubborn, persistent, dogmatic, and he, all these things. But what ended up happening was, then I got on the city council. And uh, Bob Ryan, who was actually more of my mentor, said to me one day, this man, Ken Dida, will be your follow-up mentor. And I think he knew that he was not going to be long for this world, because he died at the age of 64. And they were about the same age. But at that time, we put um, Ken on the Finance Advisory Committee. When the city was broke, you know, we were $2 million in the hole, and we only had a budget of $20 million, $12 million. So, um, in the interim, I, since then, I've gotten to know Ken, serve with him on the city council, and I just feel that I'm so blessed in my soul uh, because we both share our passion for the same God. We both share our passion for the same city. We share our passion for those people to serve others and to serve those of you here who all represent that or do that yourselves. And so with that, I just want to say, God bless you, Ken. You and I are going to start having those coffees together because now we've got other work to do. So thank you for serving. What an honor this is. Ken, I owe you a lot of thanks. My family moved here when I was about four years old and Later on as a kid in the early 70s, I recall meeting this character is how I saw it in my mind, named Ken Dida. And we discussed uh, of what I can recall at the time, this crazy notion of turning Palos Verdes Peninsula into some individual city. And something I took home from the discussions at that time 
and has continually been proven to me by you over these many years is that life is not a spectator sport. We have a responsibility as participants in the community that we live. While it's easy to complain, it's easy to uh, bring up all the problems, we do have a responsibility to be part of the solution and contributing ideas to the solution, contributing as part of the solution process is part of our responsibility as participants in the community. And you've proven that through these decades uh, of service. I appreciate the example you've set for me personally, as well as what you've done in the example you set for all of us. Thank you so much. Well, unfortunately, a couple of our neighbor cities around have not, were not able to be here, but we did get uh, letters uh, of congratulation to uh, Councilman Dida uh, from the uh, city of Gardena, the South Bay Cities of Government, which Jackie is representing. I don't know, Jackie, do you want to come up and say a few words? And we do have a letter from the South Bay Cities Council of Governments because, as everyone has said, you exemplify what every elected official should be, someone who is concerned and, and caring and spends 25 hours a day thinking about the city. Um, I just, as a former council member, I, there's two things I want to say. One is that I remember the council meeting when Ken came back from vacation. He had been in Hawaii. And he said something like he was t reading the general plan on the beach. And we all looked at him and said, who takes the general plan away? I don't think I'll ever forget that. <laughs> and then the other thing I want to say is someone that is as opinionated and as um, strong as Ken, you can imagine that we didn't all disagree. It didn't all agree with him all the time. And I think in this day and age when people are so polarized, can you imagine having all of us come here with all these different viewpoints and know that Ken dedicated his life to all of us. And it really is very, very special. And, and I sat here thinking about how, how really, you know, we, we all didn't agree all the time, but you sure set the standard. Thank you, Ken. I'd like to conclude this um, with a few remarks. Um, Ken, thank you for all your service. I call you friend. Um, and thank you for all your guidance and all of your support over the years. And thank you for all that you've done for the city of Rancho Palos Verdes. Um, and the fact that we now look down on a beautiful open coastline that would have been high density apartment buildings if things had gone the way they were going 55 years ago. So thank you for that. Thank you for making our city the beautiful place it is. And thank you for all you've done for the Palos Verdes Peninsula. Over, over the last 50 years. Thank you very much. Well, I'm here with a guest of honor, our council member, Ken Dida. This is so exciting. We're about to unveil the sign. Your thoughts right now. Well, it's uh, a very honor to be that, but I'm so humbled because uh, I never expected it. I, you know, this is my city. I worked for it, and I'm going to continue to work for it. And for future leaders watching this, you are an inspiration. What's your message to inspire the next generation to follow in your footsteps? Okay, two things. One, when you have a problem, look at the cause, not the symptoms. And then the other one is PPO. And that's not uh, was a personal provider, hospital thing. It's uh, basically patience praise off. Liz, what an amazing celebration this was today with all of our residents and local leaders here. We know how to party here in Rancho Palos Verdes. Everyone is celebrating. Ken Dida behind us. Congratulations to Councilmember Ken Dida and his whole family. That's right. Thank you so much for joining us today and for watching. I'm Maria Soraya. I'm Liz Brown Swanson. We'll see you next time.